Well, that wasn't a good start, was it? <laughs> uh, welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Demonologist UK. Welcome to this week's live stream. I want to welcome everybody that's locked in. This week, we've got a big one. We're, uh, we're, we're carrying on with our presenters special. All the presenters here on HO, well, not all of them. A couple of them wimped out. But, um, yeah, we're carrying on with uh, our presenter special. We've got Ames Slaney on tonight, host of the Lockdown Loonies Gifts and Gadgets show. And I think, I'm going to be sound really stupid now, but I think she does the confession show as well. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So don't, don't shoot me on that one. Right, before we get to that, I've got a couple of things. Don't forget, if you want to grab hold of your very own merch, the Demonologist UK merch, head over there to Catface Merch on Facebook. It says facebook.com forward slash Catface Merch. Type in the code, so just basically message them with the code demonologist101, tell them your size, and it'll be on its way to you. I think they're priced at about $16.99. To be honest with you guys, it's completely separate to what I do. They're just sponsoring me with the merchandise, and all the money goes to them. So it's all about supporting local businesses through this COVID. Also, guys, the YouTube's picking up slowly. It is picking up slowly. So if you do want to watch these shows back, if you really do want to sort of, you know, like, or the whole back catalogue is there on YouTube. So just head over to YouTube and, and search the Demonologist UK. You'll get the full shows. You'll get my show with Dr. Cal Cooper. You'll get my show with um, Jacqueline Dixon. We've had Andy McGridden on, the UFO specialist guy. Honestly, there's some brilliant shows in there. Make sure you go and check them out. Also, not this Saturday, next Saturday, the first show goes out. The Other Dimension show there live on Pulse Talk Radio. Catch myself and my co-host, Mr. Ben Winfield. And we are going to be live on our debut show. And we've got a big surprise for you guys. Everybody that's locked in tonight, everybody that's in the chat room, I'm going to give you a chance to decide what we talk about on that show. But anyways, let's get on the show. Without further ado, we're going to get Ames on the show and we're going to be talking about him. Welcome along, Ames. How are you doing? Hello. How are you? Yeah, I'm not too bad. You're right. Yeah, not too bad. I'm up at the centre, so I'm all good. I'm happy. And I just said to my, I just said to the missus, I was like, hey, Ames is coming on tonight, and she's doing it live from work. And she turned around and went, I don't get breaks like that at work. I was like, Yeah, I know. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just crazy, well, I get crazy. Paid to make the books. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean. This is your first time on the show. Uh, of all the presenters, I think you and Ness and I think Wendy are like the only people that haven't been on the show. So welcome along. Welcome to my Thank weird you. and wonderful Thank world. Thank you for having me. No, it's great. How's things at the centre? Everything okay? Yeah, it's all good, thanks. We've got Jacqueline in tonight. She's upstairs investigating. So, yeah. It's all oh, good. yeah. It's Jackie's night, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> I bet she's enjoying herself. She's been proper looking forward to it. Like she was saying yeah. last week on the show, she's like so excited. She's like, yes. yeah. So, it's lovely. So, for everybody out there, if you do want to catch Ames, she does the Gifts and Gadgets show. I think that's bi, bi weekly, in it? Every other two um, weeks. No, um, Gifts and Gadgets show is, um, I, I'm the co host. Um, Ness mm -hmm. is the main host on that one. And, um, that's um, the first Wednesday, no, the second Wednesday of every month. I do the Haunted Holiday Show, which is the th first Thursday of every month. I do the Confessions of a Paranormal Investigator, which right. is the first Tuesday of every month. All right, let me just write that all down. No, it's actually. <laughs> 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 no, it's great because I was on the Gifts and Gadgets show the other day with you and Ness, and we got right deep into yeah. conversation about demonology and stuff like that. So it was, re it was really cool. I really enjoyed that show. It was, it was lovely. It's a it was, great like, really, show, yeah. Yeah, it's like nice to get down and sort of like, you know, just talk. Because uh, a lot of the time when I'm doing interviews, it's very sort of much like I get sent over a script and I have to answer questions they've already got prepared. That was sort of like off the cuff. I prefer doing things off the cuff, it's more natural. Yeah. So we like to wing it. Get... We yeah, just... it's the best way to do it, isn't it? Yeah, it's the best it's way to do it. Have a laugh. <laughs> out to um out to Vonnie. How are you doing, Vonnie? Um out to all the Matrix Paranormal crew who have got their podcast up and coming. They've yeah. asked me to go on there, so I'm well excited about going on that one. Yeah, 100%. we like Vonnie, we do. Von's nice. She's nice yeah, Von's quality. She was talking earlier about the pyramids and all that sort of stuff, and I sort of blew her mind a little bit and she was just like, You're just too much. I was like, Imagine being me. <laughs> you know what I mean? it's all stuck in here somewhere you know so but Ames you've been an investigator for a long time I think yeah, you're saying about 20 years. 
20 yeah. years. So over that time, how have you seen investigations sort of change? How, how like, c- compare your first investigation to the one you're doing tonight? What, what's the change in the scenario that's been happening? Well, my first investigation was when I was a child, right? Yeah. Um, me and my sister, we saw this cat. Anyway, my very first investigation was the next day when I was armed with a pint of milk that I was stolen off the doorstep and a box of cat biscuits. Right? <laughs> so I was only five years old at the time. So, But that was my very first investigation. But oh, yeah. I got, in, got into the paranormal about 20 years ago, um, investigating mm-hmm. and that. So, um, yeah, and I've had my own team for 10 years and I've still, not many people can claim that they've still got the same majority of the same team like in over 10 years which is great Mm. but the things that have changed um people don't like to share information no and and this is where i think the paranormal field goes down yeah because because are we supposed to know what thing what are happening in locations if people do not share their information people just argue it away and it's not great that's not no. that's not para no. unity at all. No, that that's that, my, my biggest rant. Whenever I get on the show, is my biggest rant. Don't preach para unity if you're not going to do it. No, exactly. You know, you, so many people have got banners up on their Facebook going, "Ah, oh, para unity this, para unity that," and you you say to them, "Ah, oh, well, send me over some evidence." Yeah. I do like a like a live stream where I sort of go through yeah. evidence and that, and they're like, "No, we're right, thanks." It's like, what, what, why, 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 why preach para unity? Yeah, exactly. Nobody shares information. Like, how no. are you supposed to? It's all well and good um, going if you've got a project and that, like, and you don't want nobody to know what you're picking up on mm. and that until after you've done your work. But nobody shares their findings. There's nothing, there's no sort of database to say this is happening at this location. Like, mm. All these people have got all these different things that are happening. No one's got nothing to compare with each other because yeah, nobody I'm shares sure. it. No, no, and, and and we're all in it for the same sort of thing. Yeah, I, we, we might have our own path in that, but we're yeah. all in it for the same yeah. thing. As, I was saying, as much as I specialise in the darker things, you know, you've got people that are angel workers, people that are spiritual healers, you've got mediums. We're all there for the same reason. We're all there to sort of gather evidence to prove there is life after death because we all know there is, and yeah. we're trying to open people's minds and get them to sort of, you know, wake up and smell the coffee that you know it doesn't just end when you die i mean um who's the famous professor guy the weird looking guy i think his name's he said that um no energy no energy can disappear it just carries on in a different shape or form i think it was um freud or someone like that and it is true yeah sigmund freud that's it i knew i'm crap with names yeah i can throw off quotes all day long but you asked me who said it and i'm like yeah (laughs) (laughs) Um, big shouts out to another. Um, I had him on my show oh. um, present. I had to Sam. Ah, Welcome Sam. along, Sam. Hi, Sam. And uh, also out to Wendy as well. Hi, Wendy. How are you doing? Hello, Good to Wendy. have you locked in. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, Von is funny, Sam drives me crazy. But like, the inter- see, see I like, when I have people on the show that have been investigating for a long time, I ask them about the influence of Facebook and Facebook and these live streams because you can live stream on like um, loads of platforms nowadays. Uh, they have this like restream service now as well. Um, and we talk about, you know, obviously the, the, the live streaming of, of ghost events and like talk shows like what I do and like you do. I mean, how do you feel that's changed the whole sort of paranormal world? <sighs> Well, the live streams, um, well, the live streams have, have served a really good purpose over lockdown. People have, um, it's keeping people together and that. I don't agree with all the um, people going out, investigating over lockdown and that. But mm-hmm. I think some, I think it's key, the lot during lockdown, I think um, all the live streams have served a purpose. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. And Joe, I find as well with the live streams that have been going on now, I mean, it, it's allowing people to experience sort of watching an investigation and being involved in an investigation and then sort of seeing because you know you you know when you because you've been investigating for 20 years i had my team like i think it was like five six years ago we used to do public events and you'll get that one person that comes along and doesn't believe anything and just destroys the whole energy for the group yeah 
you know, these skeptical people that go, they'll, they'll get pushed over and they'll be like, oh, that's a really strong breeze. It's like, mate, mate, you weigh, weigh like 21 stone. It's got to be a hurricane to blow you over. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but they just destroy the energy and it gives people a chance to sort of watch these live streams and see if they would enjoy it. So when you actually have these public events now, you've actually got real people that are yeah. interested in the paranormal. So Absolutely. the energy is a lot well, better. I work for an events company as well. I work for a company called Ghost Under Tours. So yeah. So I'm I'm at Dover Castle tomorrow night. Nice, yeah. nice show. I've got a really cool story about Dover Castle, right? Have you? Yeah, I think I was about 13, 14 years old. And my mum, we, we went down to Kent uh, for a caravan for four days. And I'm like heavily into history, especially the Second World War. It's like my, my favourite thing like, to watch and to read. Um, and my mum and dad decided to take us to Dover Castle. And now underneath Dover Castle, we've got the old war the tunnels. tunnels yeah. And when you go down there and they sort of do this sort of tour around, there's bits where the lights flicker on and off like you're in a, a bomb raid. Yeah. They've got the medieval, walking... medieval tunnels as well down there as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we were walking through them, and, and they'd done this, like, sort of pretend air raid where it sort of had the sounds and the lights flickering on and off. And as they flickered back on, like, for a split second, I just saw a shadow man at the end of one of the, the tunnels just walk past. But he had, like, an old – it wasn't. I wouldn't say it was a World War II helmet. It was, like, a World War One helmet. And I was just like, yeah. whoa. Like, that blew my mind and i tried to tell my mum and she was like well because my mum's like very spiritual she was just like yeah you know <laughs> it's like, okay mum that's obviously normal <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so you you've obviously been to I me mean, you can't you're not supposed to I, I don't know if you're allowed to investigate oh sorry hi tina how are you doing um you know i don't think teams are allowed to investigate dover castle are they because it's national heritage yeah. are they yeah. actually allowed to yeah ghost on tours of one of two or three companies that are allowed to um, investigate Dover Castle. Yeah, I've done, this will be my second time there working for Ghost Hunter Tours. Wow. I, mean, that, I bet that place is, is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. It is. Yeah. It's it's amazing. It is. I, I can't say nothing more than it. It's amazing. It's beautiful. It's absolutely stunning. So, so of all the places you've investigated over your years, right, all the time you've been investigating, apart from HAPRC, because I mean, we know yeah, you work there, you've done the that. Demon Files, Apart from HAPRC and all that sort of thing, what's your favourite place that you've investigated? Not just for paranormal activity, but a place that sort of your spiritual home where you always get drawn back to. That's really easy, that is. If it weren't, yeah. obviously, the HAPRC, but um, it's in Nottingham. It's the Galleries of Justice. I have ah, seen. I have always seen wanted to do that one. Never got amazing. around to it. Yeah. It is, it's totally amazing. Um I've seen, I was in the tunnel working for another events company, yeah. right, and I was setting up a night vision camera. I had this torch in my mouth while I'm setting this camera up and that lot. Okay. And you know when you can hear gravel, um, footsteps on gravel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I didn't hear nothing, right, and there's still like gravelly floor and that. Anyway, I heard this like sniffing in my ear, like and I turned oh, around because yeah. it, it, sounded, it sounded like a dog and my ear was going with this breathe as if something was breathing right into my ear mm. and it's like that's a big bloody dog that is like because i'm turning <laughs> around with this torch in my mouth and there's nothing there and yeah. i know of a medium that also told me about his experience which was exactly the same wow. and the second thing i saw i was like checking making sure there was no guests left inside yeah. so i was like five levels underground in where the ubliet is in the cave coming up to the prison block or right, up these stairs and i saw this air, this figure come around the corner wow. and he um he had dark hair and it was like yeah. shaggy hair and anyway i went oh what are you still doing here? and i ran up the stairs right. and went around the corner and i was faced with a brick wall Bloody hell. Mm. it's crazy when things like that happen though yeah I mean, we've we had loads happen I mean, when i was investigating it was always it was always about kelverton hatch for us yeah i'm there um, on the 4th of june Oh, mate, we, we love Kelvin yeah. and Not So Secret Nuclear Bunker because it's signposted on the way there. That's definitely yeah. one of the ones that we, we, <laughs> me, me and my partner, when, when she got into the whole ghost hunting thing, we, we um, took a group, public group down there. Um, and it was the first time me and her were working together with my team. And the stuff we got there was amazing. I was sitting in, you know, like they've got those little, as you go through the little corridor, you've got that little 
sort of room on the right hand side. It's got Winston I've Churchill's not actually like been there yet. So fourth oh. of June, that's when Ghost and Tours are there. So wait till you go there. I mean, we took we took the uh, kids during the day, and they sort of were scared walking through there during the day. Wow. And this night when we was investigating, we we sort of I was setting up down in the tunnel on my own and I had a ladder and that ladder's normally full wasn't they this one set itself yeah. up and I was just like right this is going to be a good night and then we was in that little room and there's a little room it's got a picture of Winston Church when it's got a brown chair that brown chair got kicked across the room it was like what the hell and like the medical bay you'll love the medical bay that is crazy there Wow. That is absolutely crazy. But you I mean you you get to you get to go around to all these places, all these national yeah. heritage sites. I mean, it, it's absolutely brilliant, you know. But that's what you get with experience when you've been in it for so long, you absolutely. know. Um, just got a, a Wendy saying that she loves Dover Tunnels, uh, Dover yeah. Castle. Went down in the tunnels five years ago uh, to see the graffiti. It's yeah. that's a mad place. Is there anywhere in the UK where you want to investigate that you haven't actually been yet? Um, I've been to a lot of places in mm. the UK. It's where I want to investigate is in Scotland, in Edinburgh, and that's yeah. this the Nidri Street vaults. Yeah, I've see I've done Nidri, and I've also done Jedburgh as well, Jedburgh Castle. Jedburgh. That's, it's Jedburgh. Yes, yeah, I call it Jedburgh. It's the uh, <laughs> Cockney in me coming out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Nidri's Nidri's amazing. That's one with the stone circle, isn't it? Yes, it is. I think so. Mm. Definitely. I mean, Nidri's brilliant. I know Robbie from Hornet Scotland's uh, doing an investigation down there. Yeah. Um, so Nidri's definitely one field. Have you have you ever thought about doing the Hellfire K? Uh, the Hellfire done Club. It. Have you done the Hellfire, Hellfire Club? Caves, yeah. Yeah. I've done that. Have you done the Hellfire Club in North, in Southern Ireland? No. That's I've never been out of Britain. Have you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even own a passport. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my partner's literally just got her first passport and i think she's already planning a trip to dubai and new york to do a bit of shopping so i'm like okay i'm gonna be skinned but it's all good <laughs> as long as she's happy it's good as it's long great as she's happy, that's the main thing yeah yeah she i mean everyone's got that person you know she's uh, she's the light of my life she's me rock so i've just got to make her happy it's the Absolutely. way it goes <laughs> but um yeah so with your investigating I, I want to see i like a bit of controversy on the show mm. so i want to get a bit of controversy stirred up and i don't want to obviously put you in the firing line but i'm going to <laughs> so what's your take on mobile apps these are all paranormal apps what's i don't take? like them i really Good. don't like them Great, i absolutely detest them I do have a couple on my phone, but I don't mm. use them. The only thing I use them for, I use the Geo phone on there, the the Geoscope on yes. on there, and that's only just to detect vibrations. That is it. Yeah, you know that that I mean that does make sense because the a phone is able to detect vibrations. This is the mm. point. You know, if you you've got to look at what a phone is used for. Yeah. I mean, most of the new Apple devices nowadays, you tap the the Apple sign on the back, so the yeah. vibe register and it takes a screenshot so yeah. the, the geo phone makes sense i completely 100 percent agree with that but with these apps that are based around word banks and yeah the one one finder ghost where you use a camera and it yeah. turns up isn't it and then people believe it and they're like oh yeah. no it's not vr no it is vr you know so yeah. but i'm i'm glad you're on board with that i'm glad you're yeah. on board with that i asked tom or uh, warrington the same question he was like yes yeah, a load of crap so it's, it's all good it yeah. seems like the more seasoned investigators sort of prefer the old school yeah old school is is the best school 100 percent, 100 percent. so would you class yourself as a medium would you class yourself as an investigator would you sort of say like you have a specialist area within the paranormal um i am not a medium mm. uh, i work with tech yeah um and my special subject is spirit photography Oh, wicked! I've been yeah. saying for ages I need to get a photographer on 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 the show, like because I want to ask these questions because now this is where I get confused. I've done a bit of research on it. Now the old Polaroid for like the old Polaroid cameras, they didn't show up as many dusts and many orbs and as many no. sort of pictures. Um, but these new age uh, SLR and DSLR cameras yeah. do. What? Why? Do you, do you know why that is? Um. That, well, if you look in the instruction book mm -hmm. of all cameras, they will explain orbs. Yeah. 
that all you got to do is look in the um, like real light anomalies produce their own light. Yeah. Dust and insects reflect light. Yeah. So it, it's just no, I don't do orbs unless you can see it with the naked eye. Yeah. Well, no. We're, I'm in the same boat on that one. I've already. I mean, my stance on orbs from day dot has always been: yeah. if your spirit manifests using energy, whether it's electromagnetic energy, whether it's a, a current or like um, the sort of you know the Tesla theory that it's drawing um, um, electric from the environment. But if it's creating its own energy, if it's creating its own electrical source, it will pulse, or it will be able well, to see an naked eye. I'm not too sure about the pulsing part, mm. but it will produce its own light. I have got actually got a photo of um, a light anomaly, and it is actually producing its own light. And you do mm. need to see it. I will send it you after the show. Actually, yeah, no, definitely, and I'll upload it onto onto the uh, the, the yeah. group. The Demonologist UK group. So if anyone wants to check out that photo, we'll get it uploaded after the show. Uh and it'll be on facebook.com forward slash the demonologist UK, just the bumps up there. Yeah. Um so you knew it was gonna come up to this, the demon files, right? <laughs> it's a big thing. Yeah. Everyone's talking about it, you know. It, it, it's it's you've got people going, Oh, they're summoning demons, they're using sigils and that. I mean, I was I'm not gonna lie, I was on that boat when it first happened, but now I've watched a few episodes, yeah. I'm sort of getting on board slowly. Yeah, it's nothing. It's nothing bad. It's just mm. to challenge what we've all been told mm. the, what demons are. Yeah, and and the and people have always said that like demons are evil things, but I don't believe that they they all are because no. because like. like God used to smite people and all that. Like, and if you didn't believe in God's ways, you'd be mm. classed as a demon. Look at Lilith; she's like a powerhouse. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And yeah. you've got to look. I mean, when we when we get on sort of that, talking about demonics and, and demons and that, you've got to look at them through history. I like I said to uh, Vonnie yeah. on um, I was talking to her on a Facebook status uh, the other week. And I said to her, you've got to look at demons from a non-biblical view because they've been around before yeah. this whole sort of Christian, uh, Judeo sort of um, influence on what they are. I mean, I have started off, when I started off my demonology a few years ago, I was looking at things from the point of view of the Bible and, you know, the fallen angels and Solomon's key, you know, the 70, yeah. 72, 73 and all this sort of thing. Yeah, but now I've got into it. To me personally, and I don't know if you agree with this since you've been doing the demon files, I see them as interdimensional beings. Yeah. You know, when we look at it, that time is relevant. It's also, it can also run congruent as well with each other. And when you look yeah. at things, you know, is there two people called Damon and Ames in another time frame running exactly the same as us, talking yeah. about the same sort of thing, just in a separate dimension? Yeah. In the upside down, as if you watch Stranger Things. Mm, yeah, exactly. And and you know, um, there was, I can't remember who said it. it was a famous quote, and he said, "You've got to look look at perception in itself, right? The way the eye works. When we see things, we actually, like you said, we see them upside down. It's our brain that turns them the right way round. So you've got to understand that what's up is up, and what's down is down. So what you've been taught since the beginning of time is actually is the opposite way round." You know, but with the demon files and doing the demon files, do you feel like that you're getting somewhere with that? Do you feel like you've made like this connection? You spoke to them. You sort of understand that they're not all bad and they're not all good. Yeah. Well, I think Jane's a big part of this. Like, mm. it's um, she 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 does all the delving into the history and all that. Like, and and that. So she'd probably be the better one to ask. Mm. But I've never felt threatened or anything. Yeah. So um, I, I'm not too, I'm not too sure. I, I I don't think it's we've done anything too bad yet. Anyway, so no, no, I would agree. I would agree. I would agree. But you did have a bit of scary time in the chamber of fear. I think that was on episode two, wasn't it? You had a bit of a um, scary the time. The one. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't scary. I just couldn't breathe. It felt like something was suffocating me. Mm. Um. No, and I, I, I couldn't. I couldn't get up. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't walk for a moment. It was only a momentarily thing. Like it's like walking back into the thing. It's like it's like what am I doing? What am I walking out? 
I should be getting back in there. <laughs> but, but I'm not I mean, kicking myself. It's great, though. It's great. It's a sort of challenge. It's more, I think, when people re- watch Demon Files, obviously they're attracted to the name of it because, like I've been told, uh, demons are trending now. Like, we're like us demonologists yeah, have become like... Everyone's working with demons all of a sudden. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> us demonologists have become like, you know, the, the gangster rappers of the paranormal world all of a sudden. <laughs> like, everyone wants to like, speak to us and stuff like that. Um and like people like me and Ben, we've been doing it for years, and I mean, Ben's been doing it since time began. And um, we just become cool all of a sudden. So I think people are attracted to the name of the Demon Files. But what I think you guys are doing that's great is you're sort of getting people to challenge their perception and getting people yeah. to challenge their belief system, which is great. Yeah, it is great. And it has caused a bit of a stir behind the scenes within the demonology sort of community. So it's it, what you're doing yeah. is great. But I mean, so obviously, Jay, Jay must have come up with the idea. Like, did you not sort of when when she said it, did you not go, Whoa, hold on a minute, I don't demons, nah, that's not me, or did you would you like sort of attracted to that? Well, I, I wasn't I'm not it, it thing that attracted me is because I've never really actually believed too much in demonics and demons and that. What mm. um I've always believed that you get good spirits, you get bad spirits. Yeah. And and I think demons get a bad press personally myself because mm-hmm. they get the blame for everything. Something bad happens to someone, oh my god, it's a demon. And it's, yeah. not, it's not always the case. No, so, it isn't. And I, I was agree. quite excited when she said, uh, when we, she, I was asked to jump on board, so like, yeah. No. <laughs> I'll have a bit of that. Yeah, I'll have a yeah. go on that. Yeah. <laughs> Try to think what's within reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's great, you know, like when Neil does, he does sort of challenge the perception. James challenges perception. It's great. Yeah. Um, so when you're in these demon files and you're sort of doing this thing, do you find your investigation so, so compare it to a normal investigation where you're going to investigate a a haunted place or a haunted house and that? How does that investigation sort of compare to when you're doing the demon files? Do you approach it in a different sort of yeah, way? We, yeah, it's a bit more structured because um, we decide what we're going to do, mm-hmm. like, and now we're going to conduct what what experiments we're going to do beforehand and if thing, think things could change momentarily jane could all, all of a sudden say they don't want to communicate with us like this we need to yeah. do it like this mm. so so all of a sudden we've got to make sure we've got everything with us like, so we can like, decide what we, we're, going, we're going to change it so it could change at any moment yeah, and I think that's the I think that's the nature of the paranormal as well. It's being able to sort of, I mean, over your your, your time investigating, you'd understand like you know you have to be able to top chop and change to change the investigation at any point to sort of go right. We're not going in the right direction. We're not getting the right evidence. Let's change to this. Yeah, you know, and and I think that's the sign of, of of a well experienced paranormal investigator. It's also a sign of a well, anyone dealing with the paranormal, well, like, well experienced medium, well experienced healer. Um, so we're going to go into a quick ad break and afterwards we're going to go into what I like to call the fun questions so we're going to get into that so I'm just going to do a quick shout out to everybody that's locked in Um, out to Jane, out to the boss lady Mrs Jane Rowley, how are you doing I hope she really, she she was in the late district the other day weren't she? Yeah well she's here now oh yeah yeah. no rest for the wicked oh absolutely (laughs) you know how it goes <laughs> also um i'm a facebook user this one is k john at k john and she's saying let's sort our session in scotland ah, i know k k's one of my yeah. to tour friends yeah i mean that's the great thing about this the community itself and, and facebook it's bringing everybody together it really yeah. is like you said during the lockdown it brought the paranormal community together and you know it is great it is great but yeah but we're going to jump into a quick ad break um and then what we'll do is on the other side we'll do like me, me fun questions because I, I like doing them so see you on the other <laughs> side people okay we interrupt our program to bring you this important message
and welcome back on the other side. I keep oh, saying it every week. I've, I've, those there. <laughs> I've got a work. <laughs> <laughs> Even the yeah. antiques one at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody, if if you need um if if you need an advert made, speak to Ames. Um, she only charges about eighty quid an advert, so it's fine, man. You know, it's it's all good. Uh, <laughs> you got mates rights. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I only paid seventy nine ninety nine for me, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, I've got to send a massive shout out to uh, Jonathan Dowding locked in. It's good to have you locked in. Um, and also out to Annie as well, out to Annie Sedora locked in. Um, good friend of mine that uh, works alongside with me with all the stuff that I do. Um, big shouts out to her and Ben as well. Out to Mr. Winfield, my, my co host on a Saturday now. I'm really looking forward to that. It's going to be quite cool. Yeah. Because, like, we all know on Facebook, you're sort of like censored to a degree. You can't talk, go like too deep into things because you end up getting like this seven day ban. Like Jack, Jacqueline didn't do anything; she got a seven day ban. Yeah. So it'd be great oh, to get yeah, on a... but all the stuff that comes out of my mouth. I'm surprised I've not had a permit <laughs> You lot on my best behaviour tonight. <laughs> you lot on the loonies, nah, mate. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm not surprised you lot ain't like got like one of them sort of banned for life banners yeah, written across. I'm it. definitely, I'm guilty, guilty as charged. I am. I'm terrible. <laughs> I'm on my best behaviour tonight, so you're yeah. lucky. <laughs> like you said to me, it's a serious show. It's a serious show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is where we get into like me, me funny bits, like that. Like, the questions that I like to ask people. I mean, I want people to get to know the presenters, um, and I want I, that's the reason why I'm doing all this, like the presenter specialists. I want people to get to know us. So that we they, they they can relate to us, you know that's that's the main reason. So first one we're going to talk about this is one that's called "What's in your box?" Now you're about to go on your favourite location, your favourite investigation, but you're only allowed to take three bits of tech. Now I know you're a bit of a tech quiz, mm. so this is going to be should just roll off the tongue. I've had people sit there going, um, um. So, what three things will you be taking with you on the investigation? Full spectrum camera. Yep. Blur one, my thermal imaging camera. Yeah, and the spirit box that I built. Oh, you built a spirit box? Yeah. Was well, it like an I'm SP? I'll show you, but it's at home now because I'm going <laughs> to David Castle tomorrow. <laughs> so is it like an, is it like a cross between an SB seven, SB eleven sort of thing? No, it, it is a pretty. Anyone that's everyone that knows me knows my knows my spirit box that I've built. I'll have to show you. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. It's pretty I mean... damn amazing. We it actually, it's been used on a lot of the live feeds. It, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, we we see we when we were investigating, we sort of done this thing where we started using SB sevens, we started using SB elevens, and we wanted to sort of rule out the fact that because where it's flicking through the different FM yeah. channels, we were trying to rule out the traffic that's going through. I mean, it could just be a host on another radio station, yeah. and we're doing that whole you know ink blot effect where we're hearing what we want to hear. And my team, we start using TVs and putting them on like um, yeah. static mode. I've always quite fancied, you know, those really small TVs that used to get, yeah. but all yeah. the static. I would love to do something with one of those, modify some. Yeah. Well, we was at Bilsington Priory in Kent, um, which was an old uh, monk's priory, and it was supposed to be haunted. And we tried this whole TV thing; it kept turning off. And we was like, "Oh my god!" Like you know, and we got to a point where we was going, "Right, turn the TV off to let us know you hit turned off." Turns out the thing was on a bloody timer. And it, <laughs> <laughs> it just managed to go off at that time. That sounds like a confession waiting to happen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've got loads. I just never get time to, to sort of like send them over to you. Like the one, because I used to investigate as a family. We, I had a family run business. Like my partner was part of it. And my brother I used to run it with me. My mum was a medium. My auntie was a medium. My dad was like pure skeptic. And we was walking down to this place called uh, Cash's Wells, which is just around the corner. And uh, my dad literally fell from the top of the hill all the way to a stream at the bottom with our brand new camera in his hand, and that got mashed. So that's another oh, confession no. for you, anyway. Oh, you need to send them over to me because I've, <laughs> yeah, I've got no we'll confessions do. yet. <laughs> I will do. I definitely will do. <laughs> but um, So why the Fleur camera? Now, for me, a lot of investigators I've had on the show have completely gone, Fleur camera, no, it doesn't work, it's crap. So why Fleur? I love the thermal imaging camera. I do. I have picked up some most amazing EVPs off a thermal imaging camera. EVPs on a flip? Yeah, I suppose yeah. It, yeah, that would work. Yeah. Yeah, I tell you, because you're doing the video and that, and I have, I've, I've got loads of them actually. I should send some over. 
yeah, definitely. I mean, the, I mean, the demos out there because yeah, I'm I'm that sad that I name my listeners, but anyway, the demos out there. Demonites. No, no, that makes them sound religious. No, the demos. Demos. It's like for the new show that I've got because it's called The Other Dimension. I've actually got a wicked name. Um, someone come up with calling themselves the odds, the ODs, the odds, and I was like, that, 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 that suits. I like that. <laughs> so, but yeah, I'm sure the demos will pick them apart. Uh, the uh, the the thing is because that's what I like. I like it when you sort of stick a bit of evidence up there and people go, ah, oh, and, and they sort of question it. And it's, One it's of great. the pieces of evidence I've got is um, mm. it's swearing. It's like. It's, it's it, it was brilliant, like, and I'm like my friend, like she was calling out, and I like did anyone hear? And, like, and it's, all you hear was, oh for fuck's sake! Like, oh and brilliant! It, and it's brilliant. <laughs> I, I love it when they swear at me. I I, I, when, when they say stuff like that, I think, oh god, they've they've obviously stubbed their ghost toe on a ghost table or something. Do you know? Yeah. What I mean? <laughs> so yeah and i mean it's, I'm, that's great i mean obviously the the um the full spectrum camera that's obvious you need to document what's coming through you know so yeah. but actually you wouldn't believe it of all these people i've asked question this question to none of them have said about a camera so it's it shows experience i suppose at the end of the day so it's great it's great um next one we call it the paranormal dinner party so you're about to host a dinner party for dead people they have to be dead they have to be famous and they have to sort of, you know, dead and famous, we'll say. You get three chairs around the table and you're about to sit down and you want to question, you want to talk to them. You know, we're not doing that whole, you know, marry, blah, 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 blah. But you get yeah. to pick three guests at a paranormal dinner party. Who would it be? Um, Arthur Conan Doyle. Yep. He's the guy who wrote Sherlock, right? Possibly. Yeah. Um, I know he, he was into um, the paranormal. Mm-hmm. Harry Price. Harry Price. No, okay, it sort of rings yeah. a bell. And also Alistair Crowley. Oh dear. Okay. Right. <laughs> so why Alistair Crowley? I, I I don't know, it just fascinates me. No like, mm. it's just some of the the stuff that that he's done and that like it's just I was like I just want to know a bit more. Yeah. I mean want to get his... into his mind. Yeah, his theories were very dark, you know. Um, even Mussolini kicked him out in Italy in 19, I think it was 1912, yeah. and said he's the most evilest man I've ever come across. You know, we talking about Mussolini, Hitler's best friend, kicking him out. So <laughs> There's he a was place evil. in Italy that he used to live. I think mm -hmm. it was Italy or was it France? can't remember. But, and um, people, they don't like people going in there because of them, um, supposed to be demonic and that. Yeah. Well, his first encounter, I think, it was in 1940. Well, no, he, he had encounters before that, but he had an encounter in 1914 where he picked up the demon called Lamb. Mm. And he drove. This, this is the only thing. I mean, I know loads about, you know, the Golden Dawn. Uh, he, he practiced the Lima, and, you know, he was um, one of the main staples for the OSO as well. So I know quite a lot about Crowley. But the thing that stands out in my mind is in 1914, he drew a picture of Lamb. And. In 1942, they drew a picture of an alien that they called the Grey. And when you compare the two pictures, they look near enough exactly the same. Wow. So was he communicating with demonics or was he communicating with, with aliens. extraterrestrials? Mm. Are we, are we, yeah, we've got to call them aliens now because yeah. the American government say they exist. So, um, yeah, that's a ban. hundred <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> percent. Um, Harry Price. Yeah, I, you have to remind me who he is. I'm not, I can't I'm not the name, but Bally I can't remember. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. I definitely, Brilliant. I think I'd want to pick his brains. Yeah. 100%. He, yeah. He, you it know, was, it used to be in a bit of a fraud as well at some. Yeah, I mean, Bolly Rectory, there's so many people that slate yeah. it down and say it wasn't haunted, but from what yeah. I've read, it, it's got to be. It's like everyone's caning Edna Ray Warren at the moment. It was, I think it was haunted, but I think it might may have been taken out of context as well. I think mm. um, things have been added, if you know what I mean. Mm. Uh, oh, I think James has put something up. Uh, James said, new comments, new comments. There we go. Weren't Cash's Wells where a photo of Demon Bow was captured by West? Ham. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, I've had a look at that. I'm, I'm about sixty percent out on that. But I've been to Cash's Wells and I've never picked up anything demonic there. Um, I think I've been there about nineteen times. So, 
Um, and the last one you said, were, the first one you said was um, Arthur Conan Doyle. Mm. Now, he wrote Sherlock, I know that, and I know that he was into psychical research as well. Yeah. But why Arthur Conan Doyle? I, I, I think he just um, puts a bit of a... a he, it, it was like a bit of um, the op opposite to Harry Price, if you know what I mean. He was... Yeah. He was in in the other. He was in the psychological research, whereas Harry Price was in the other one. Mm. And I think the arguments between them two and the respect between them both as well. I think it'd be quite interesting to see. Definitely, definitely, it'd be one of the dinner parties that you talk about for a long time. Yeah, because you've got them um, two sort of arguing about research, and you've got Alistair Crowley over in the corner drawing yeah. a few sigils and summoning the evil. You know, what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and then going, "What's for afters?" Uh, <laughs> So yeah, no, that's that's a, that's quite a cool. And I was I asked, I think I asked Jacqueline last week, and she said about Ed and Lorraine Warren. I oh, said, yeah. oh, that'd be quite cool. But have you seen everyone sort of cailing them off at the moment? Because obviously we've got the kind of new conjuring coming out on the fourth of June. Okay. And there's loads of people saying that they're frauds and stuff. I've not seen anything because I don't watch TV. I don't watch. I don't watch a lot. Most hmm. of my life is here. <laughs> <laughs> that's Neil's fault though. He's a bit of a slave yeah. driver. He is. He does pay me, pay me the make. Well, he pays Jane the mega books. He pays me the monkey knots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone always complains he has his favourites. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Right. So the next one. This is quite a cool one. Um, this is the last one. We do investigate live and avoid. So the one place you want to invest. It could be anywhere in the world. One place you want to investigate. One place that you want to go and do a Facebook live at. Or and then one place that you would probably avoid that you don't really want to investigate. Okay, um, I'd love to investigate Alcatraz. Oh, brilliant! Yeah, yeah. Um, do a live. Um, I'd probably like to do a live at um, Dover Castle because obviously yeah. I'm like it, it. It is a great place. Somewhere mm -hmm. I'd avoid. Um, I don't think there's anywhere I would avoid. I'd try anywhere yeah. once. Yeah, I mean, me, it would be the cage in St. Osif's. So I'd probably avoid that place like the plague. Have you heard of that one? Like the cage in St. Osif's. Oh, yeah, I have. Yeah, um, yeah. I do you know, yeah, because um, the they said it was sort of to do with the witch trials or something. The it's called the witch's den. Yeah, the witch stone. I don't, but I don't think I believe. I'll tell you where I would avoid actually. Um, Where's that? The poltergeist house. I don't fancy that. Oh, that's um, East Drive. East Drive. Yeah, I don't fancy yeah. it. No, 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 I mean, I've never been there, but I don't hear good reviews. And I've been to the cage twice, and both nights it was like sitting in a pub. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was atmosphere. Yeah, I, I think um, I've heard that the chip shop near there is pretty damn good. Like, it's yeah, probably worth going up there for the chip shop, but that's about it. Yeah, anywhere close to the seaside is great for oh, fish yeah. and chips. But I mean, my father in law, like, big up my father in law, he's just opened his new bakery business. So, if anyone wants to get some good cake, right? I know we talk about fish and chips, but if you want to get some good cake, 100%, right? If you love a donut, you love a muffin or a milkshake, Clacton on Sea, head over to a shop called Waffle On or add them up on Facebook. Because trust me, have a look. Honestly, Ames, have a look at some of these desserts. They are mad. Like this guy's been baking before I was born, so they're like wow. proper nice. Um, when you said about investigating Alcatraz, that's really, really. I mean, that's one of the places that sort of stand out because you have like these big standout places like Bran Castle in Romania, yeah. um, Alcatraz in America, uh, Eastern State in America. Yeah. But it's why would you pick Alcatraz over these other places? Because normal people go like they go, ah, oh, Bran Castle, because that's where. Dracula was and stuff like that. What made you pick Alcatraz? The sharks. <laughs> <laughs> the sharks all around it. Like, I've got an obsession with sharks. Oh, Joe, you know my little one has. My um, my middle daughter, she, she loves sharks. She watches all that deep blue water and stuff like yeah, that. I, I, I know loads of stuff about sharks. Like, I'm a shark fanatic. Mm. Yeah, I'm. I'm just like I honestly believe that they're just they can be very angry creatures, but I think that's because I, I, they've misunderstood. If 
someone kept jumping in my backyard, I'd be bloody angry as well. I think they're just angry because they've got like loads of teeth and no hands to brush their teeth, so they've always got constantly bad breath. I think that's that's my take on it anyway. <laughs> so... Did you know? You tell your daughter, right, just, right, that the mm. bull shark is the only shark that can swim in fresh water and salt water. I didn't, I didn't know that. I mean, you you know about sharks. I mean, I'm, there's a little fact that you they can't reverse. Right. I will do. I mean, um, didn't it's sharks also can't swim backwards? Easy. Can they? They can't. They can't swim backwards because the way their gills face, they drown yeah. or something. Um, that's that's yeah. as far as my shark yeah, knowledge goes. The, the gills are there. They need the water to pass over the gills so they can breathe. Mm. Yeah. Um, Jane's saying. Um, Clint Eastwood escape from there. Yeah, I, I think. He, oh, yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, in the film. <laughs> <laughs> and Sean Connery. Yeah. Oh, I love that film. That's the one with um, Nicholas Cage as well, isn't it? Yeah. The, the Rock. Yeah, that's. that's yeah, cool. the Rock. Uh, at Kathy, welcome along, Kathy. She's saying, yeah, it's crap. I think she's talking about St. Osiphs. That's definitely. Um, and Jane saying Arthur Conan Doyle was interested in the Fae. Mm. I mean, I want to do. I find it hard to believe because I know two fairy don't exist, but I want to do a show on the face. So I'm definitely going to get Jane to do that. Yeah. Um, I mean, when it comes to your theories of investigating, right, everyone has that one theory that sort of stands out in their mind. Mm. To me, everything's sort of based around auto suggestion. I've got this big thing about also auto suggestion. I mean, what sort of stands out in your mind when you come to your investigation? What, what's your, what's your theories? Do you have any like sort of theories? Well, well, I don't know about theories. I, I, I do like to know about a location before I investigate it. I might not tell mm -hmm. the rest of the team about it, but I like to know about where I can put cameras and that and yeah. where I believe it's haunted. That, that's just my little thing. But but I don't tell the rest of the team where no. to put them. That's... No, I mean, I'm I'm opposite to that. I believe that you should go there not knowing and sort of do it as you go along. But everyone investigates in their own little way, don't they? Yeah. So, you and mean, also, it... um, you need to know about the land as well. What was there before it and that? So mm. I do like to know background and history because I'm not I'm not a medium. I know nothing. If if I can be the one person that can research the location and yeah. be able to give people that are picking up like the mediums answers mm. like then confirm what they're picking up then yeah i don't see a problem with it i always believe that one one of the team members needs to do the history and yeah know all the know as much as they can possibly know yeah everyone needs a kieran o'keefe that's what you're saying <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't know about a kieran o'keefe <laughs> but everyone needs an historian now this is quite a controversial thing i want to talk to you about because obviously being an investigator and that how do you think these Hollywood films and these budget amateur ghost hunting things that are on Amazon, YouTube, and you've got all these YouTubers out there, you know, going, oh, do a Ouija ball, do this. How do you think that's affected the... You know what? Show? America has got a lot to answer for, a hell of a lot to answer for. Yeah. Right, they're going on about, like, Ouija boards are the most evil thing in the world. But nine times out of ten, back in old the old days, people couldn't even read or write, let alone bloody spell. <laughs> Do you know what yeah, I mean? True. What yeah, makes it's true. you think they're going to come along and, and mm. write something out? So, yeah, 100%, always, 100%. Yeah, I've always been a bit of a board killer myself, even though I'm getting a bit better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, my my mum studies uh, spirit balls. She's very good with them. She's highly into spirit balls. I went out and got her for, um, it was the weirdest Christmas present I've ever bought for anybody, but she wanted the original 1939 Hasbro Ouija board, so I got it for her. Oh, wow. Brilliant. And it was like, whoa, this is weird wrapping this up, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but talking about Americans and that, we was watching, uh, me and my partner, we watched a film called Dibbuck Box. It's on Amazon. If everyone wants to go and check it out, go and check it out. It's a really good film, actually. And it's all to do with this YouTube hype of buying Dibbuck Boxes and opening them up. Now, I know you guys have got one at the centre because uh, Neil and Jane both told me. Um, but this guy buys it off the dark web. He opens it up. All this demonic stuff starts happening to him and he ends up in a mental asylum. And like you said, Americans, they, they do embellish everything. Well, not yeah. everything, but most things. I, I think yeah. that's bad of me to say that. Um, but like these amateur ghost hunters, they're sort of encouraging people to go out and just start investigating. I mean, when you started investigating, when you first actually started going out seriously investigating, how did you learn about protection and safety and, and, and doing things properly? Did you sort I of learn as you went along? Personally, I don't use protection, personally. Mm. 
no. Um, but research, like know your subject, know the things that you, you your gadgets that you're using. Yeah. Because if you ain't using them correctly, then mm. what's the point? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a hundred percent. Like, I just, I just, I just wish people would just sort of take their time and just sort yeah. of do the research and yeah. get to know people in other teams as well make mm -hmm. as many friends as you can in the paranormal field i know that you get a lot of back backstabs and that lot but mm -hmm. as long as you've not i, I don't like making enemies like I, I, I there's not many people that i do not get on with in the paranormal field i get on mm. with virtually everybody yeah 100 percent. and yeah. and i've got a lot of friends in the paranormal as well mm. so yeah no I'm, I'm the same i get along with everybody i have my trolls but a lot of people take that to heart i see trolls as i must be doing something right because yeah, they've got absolutely. them to complain about so yeah, yeah. i mean and but, complaining about you they ain't hurting anybody else no no exactly so my final question for you ames and it's been great having you on tonight but one final question for you somebody is, is about someone's going to watch this and they're going to go out and they're going to go right i want to be a paranormal investigator what's your advice to them where should they start I would say I would come up to the centre, the Haunted Antiques, mm -hmm. um, speak speak to the team, um, or re research and um, look for people um, people online, or look for ghost, local ghost groups and history groups, mm -hmm. especially history groups because of um, you get like minded people there as well. So. That's good. Mm. Just just learn as much as you possibly can. Know your subject and get into it for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. Oh, and stay away from the the special one off deals of yeah. demonologist course and parapsychologist because <laughs> Ames has got like every certificate there is out there of all of them. She spent instead of, instead of spending lockdown doing live streams, Ames was in the study, weren't you? Yeah, I did do a bit of studying. I've only got one left to do, but I never got time to finish it. But I <laughs> will do once my coursework's finished, my teaching coursework. Yeah, no, I mean, my, my partner's just done all her coursework. She's just finished yeah. off a level two now. I know exactly what you're going through. It's just crazy yeah. amounts of work. It is so. loads. I'm on my last month, so almost oh, there. Yeah. She's done all her. She's just sitting, finishing up on her GCSEs now, and then she's got a certificate and that. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I know exactly what you're going through. Yeah. But, Ames, honestly, it's been great having you on. Honestly, I've, I've really enjoyed the chat. It has been a great chat. Now, I do this thing at the end of the show where I give you the opportunity to plug anything you've got coming along, any investigations, if you've got any unsold tickets, any lives coming up, I hand the show over to you so you can speak to the demos and let them know where to find you. Yeah. Right. I work for a company called Ghost Hunter Tours, um, and I do a live feed show from every Sunday at 8 o'clock, and it's called Are You Brave Enough? And that is on their Ghost Hunter Tours page. Also, we have the Demon Falls coming up soon. Um, mm -hmm. not sure when that is, though, but you can find out on the Haunted Antiques page. Um, mm -hmm. Also, I've, worked, I've got my own team called Gap Paranormal. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook and everything. Um, I can't think if I've remembered everything, but if you want to have a ghost done, go to Ghost Hunter Tours. Brilliant. Brilliant. And I know the next <laughs> Demon Files, I've got it confirmed, the next Demon Files, the one that they are, and this is like, a, I'm, I'm probably like ruining things, but the next demon that you guys are looking at is the one called Amy. Yes, we are, yes. And so, also, mm -hmm. if you've got any confessions, send oh, yeah. them to me, please. Yeah, uh, hit Ames up. Even if you have to put it on the HAPRC live feeds page or hit yeah. Ames up on Facebook, send the confessions over because the confession yeah. show is great. It's great to have uh, our, all of our confessions on there because we don't ever do anything right as paranormal investigators. No. Nope. And <laughs> nine times out of ten, it goes wrong. So, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm the I'm the biggest one for that. <laughs> Hundred <laughs> percent. Me too. Me too. <laughs> Me too. Right, Ames. I'm gonna let you go and crack on with the thing stuff you got to do at HAPRC. It's been great having you on. Really, Thank really enjoyed it. Me. We're gonna definitely have to do it again. You're gonna have to come on Pulse with me and Ben uh, for an uncensored chat into the and look into the paranormal. <laughs> you might live to regret that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I probably will. <laughs> Get you and Nest on at the same time. That'd be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, it's been great having you on, um, Ames. I hope you enjoy the rest of your night, and we shall speak to you soon. Thank you. Take care. See you later. Bye.
Right, so everybody, that's Ames. Now, I said at the end of the show, I've got something big coming up for you guys. I'm going to do something that I've never done before. Now, I want to give you guys in the chat room, so don't go, go anyway, don't touch anything. I want to get you guys involved in the show. Now, as you know, next week, 29th of May, I start my brand new show with my co-host Ben Winfield over there on Pulse Talk Radio. Now, I want to give you, the listeners, I want to give you a chance to determine what we talk about on our first show, right? So all you have to do is stick a comment there in the chat. Um, The more suggestions we get, the more we get to pick from. I'm going to try and sort some sort of competition out within the next week. So whoever gets the the pick gets a free reading. That If I can't sort it out, I apologize. But yeah, I want to know know what you guys want me and Ben to talk about on Pulse. So stick it up there in the chat room or hit me up on my wall. It's facebook.com forward slash demonologist UK. That's next week, Saturday. 29th of May, our debut show. Also, next week's show over here on the HAPRC live feeds, we are carrying on our presenter special. Now, next week, we have Wendy Lindsay on. I'm looking forward to this one. We're going to keep going with the presenters. I want you guys to get to know your presenters so you know who's doing the shows and what they're about. Um, Week after that is another one. We've got Linda Brooks on as well. And then the week after that, we're joined by Phil Barron, which is going to be great. I mean, the presenter series is going really, really well. Um, don't forget, if you do want to get some official merchandise, all you have to do is literally head over to facebook.com forward slash catface merch, type in the code demonologist101, and them guys will sort you out with a demonologist UK t shirt. Now, it's been great talking to you tonight. The crowd has been great. Don't forget, once again, head over. So the HAPRC live feeds. I'm going to be sticking some of Ames's um, evidence up on the page after this. So if you want to go and check that out, go and check that out. But anyway, from me and from the Demonologist crew, out to all my demos out there, take care. And don't forget, catch me next week. Same place, same time, 9 p.m. GMT, right here on the HAPRC network. I'm out of here, guys. Take care.